gift on a thing.
is risen indeed. Almighty God, to you all the hearts are open, all desires know that from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. First reading is from Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Stand and read, read responsibly Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. Be in what? He makes me lie down in the pastures and leads me to the Lord. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come from me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely, Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from First Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. 
For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example. So you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for our righteousness by his wounds. You have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the 23rd Psalm to 
the letter to Peter to John's Gospel chapter 10 and that common theme has to do with sheep sheep who are shepherded we choose this theme every fourth Sunday of Easter every fourth Sunday of Easter we set aside and call it Good Shepherd Sunday and for many this image of a shepherd is a very comforting image. Uh, we have a, she a shepherd that leads us and guides us. A shepherd that knows us and calls us by name. We have a shepherd that loves us and takes care of us. And while this is a comforting image, a message that, that may warm our heart, there may be a part of us that rebels at this image, pushes back at this image. Because sometimes we don't want to be known as sheep. You know, sheep conjures up the image of somebody else setting down rules and laws and, and regulations. Somebody else telling us what we ought to do. Somebody else telling us where we ought to go and us being expected to blindly follow no matter where the shepherd leads. But there is an element, <coughs> I think, of this image of sheep and shepherd that can be enlivening for us, can be exciting for us, can remind us that we are on a life-giving journey. And I think the key to understanding the image and setting aside our, our reservations with the image is to pay attention to the relationships. And I want to talk about three relationships, just, just briefly. And the first relationship is that as sheep, we're part of a flock. Jesus did not say, I am the good shepherd and I call a lamb. Jesus says, I call a whole flock. We're called to be a part of that flock. And when we walk through verdant pastures, we don't do it by ourselves. When we walk along running waters, we don't do it individually. We do it with one another. Here at St. Paul's, we call that flock our church. And it is here that we form a community. We learn the value of what it can be like to have other people to lean on when we're feeling weak. We learn what it means to be a member of a flock, to be a member of a community, and learn the value that this flock can bring so we can ask other people's opinion when we are confused. We have come to expect the support of one another that we so freely give here at St. Paul. We support one another when one of our flock is hurting. So Good Shepherd Sunday reminds us that to be a Christian is to have a relationship with other Christians. We don't have to do it all on our own. But we can be confident that others will join us in our, in our effort and have our back when we feel threatened. So the first relationship is we're members of a community. We're members of a flock. We enjoy the support, love, and care of one another. And the second image that I think can help this image of the Good Shepherd come alive is Jesus, as the good shepherd, loves us, 
made us, sustains us, and never, never leaves us alone. Never leaves us abandoned. Never leads us to be threatened by bandits that would steal or kill or destroy us. I mean, we know that there will be times when we get it wrong. We know as human beings and from our experience, we know there are times that we will tend to stray and maybe go down the wrong path. We can expect as human beings that there will be times when we will fall short and in Christian terms what we call sin. But the good shepherd is always there to, to come out and find us, always there to come out and search us out, always there to welcome us back into the flock and forgive us no matter what path we might have been down, no matter what act we might have done, no matter how many times we get it wrong, the Good Shepherd loves us, welcomes us, forgives us, and puts us back on the right path. That's good news. And the third relationship, briefly, is that empowered by this love and forgiveness and aware of the support of the community and the flock, the church, we have come to understand that we have something to share with people outside these walls. We know what it like is like to be forgiven. So we go outside these walls and forgive. We know firsthand that they can recite examples of times when God has blessed us and blessed us immensely. So we go outside these walls and seek people out that need those blessings, that will benefit, and we bless them and share what has so freely been given to us. Having known the love, support, and care of the church, we leave here and go out into the community and reach out to those who need our love, our support, and our care. Prayers of the people are form five on page three hundred and eighty nine. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. So we pray for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Matthew, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers, and all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of our world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord for this congregation of St. Paul's, for that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for all who have commended themselves to our prayers, certainly the people on our prayer list, certainly we came into this church this morning with needs and concerns of people on our mind. For family, friends, and neighbors that be freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord for all who have died, both in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord now rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Paul and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To you, Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let's confess our sin against God and neighbor. Most merciful God. Our Father and me, by what we have done, by what we have not done, not done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen.